Welcome to In Conversation with Manwar Khan podcast. This podcast is brought to you by the Do Not Be a Bystander campaign. You can join us in raising awareness about bullying by visiting the do not be a bystander.com and be sure to subscribe to the channel to stay informed about upcoming episodes. Today's participants are Adria, Farifta, Raima, and Ziana. Our special guest for today's episode is Lilia Honan. Welcome to our Bullying Awareness Podcast. I'm your host, Manwar Khan. Today, I'm joined by four young individuals who are ready to share their thoughts and insights on the topic of words matter. Words hold huge power and should be used responsibly. Being mindful of the language we use, both in spoken and in written communication, can contribute a more sympathetic respectful and understanding world. Today's participants are Adria, Farifta, Ziana, and Raima. Thank you everyone for joining today. Um, before we continue, I would like to introduce our special guest for today's podcast, Lily Ahonen. So Lily is a nurse and a foster parent caring for medically fragile children. She also holds a diploma in mechanical engineering technology. She loves to travel and has been to over, can anyone guess how many countries? 40 countries. She loves flying and she has finished half of her private pilot license. She's a sustainer member of the Junior League of Calgary and she's also a living organ donor, having donated her kidney in 2019. Lily is an actor and a model. She has worked in runway shows, including New York Fashion Week. Thank, welcome, Lily, for joining our show. Thank you so much. So Lily will shed some lights on the topic of this we are we will be t having uh, that conversation with words matter and give some advice and tips now that we have introduced our participants and guests let's get started with our question my first question words holds giant power to shape our emotion and experience adria why do you think words matter and can you think of a time when someone's words made you happy and encouraged so um, what we say to others can change their thoughts and feelings. For example, um, kind words can make them feel happy and boost their self-esteem. But harmful words, um, unkind words, can make them feel sad and they might lose some self-esteem. And also what we say can change any relationship between you and a person. So. For example, you say something, you give your friend a really kind compliment about how they look today. So that might um, make them feel happy and it might make the relationship go stronger. And also, but sometimes we have to say things that might hurt or disappoint other people, like telling them the truth about something um, of an incident it might make them unhappy. And also, I remember in grade five, I would have trouble with long division. Like, I am i wouldn't really be that used to it. So then my teacher, she helped me out. She gave me more worksheets. She encouraged me by saying um, nice things. And it made me feel more confident. All right. Excellent. Anything else, Andrea, you want to add? So there we have to say sometimes some words you mentioned that that might hurt some people. But we do not do it intentionally, right? If this is the fact, truth, we say it, and we do also apologize that I'm sorry if it hurts you, but this is the fact or this is the truth. It is the approach how you say it, right? Excellent. Thank you. So in using our words to support and encourage our friends and family is a wonderful way to 
build and uh, str make stronger our relationships and create a positive impact in our uh, daily lives. So my question for Farifta is, what are some ways we can you we can um, we can use our words to support and encourage our friends and family? Um, thank you for the question. Um, using our words to support and encourage our friends and family is vital. Uh, we can offer compliments, express gratitudes, and be good listeners. During tough times, we should provide insurance and understanding celebrating their achievements and showing kindness without judging. Judgment can make a significant, a significant differences. Um, our words um, possess the ability to lift, to uplift and show love, making it essential to use them thoughtfully to strengthen our relationships with loved ones. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. Great answer. Thank you. Thank you, Farifta. Uh, providing feedback or criticism is a crucial skill that demands careful thoughts and consideration. Using the right words can, um, can greatly impact how the feedback is received and whether it, the results of the impact or the po if it's a positive or negative impact. So my question for Ziana is, what are some strategies to, for choosing right words when you are giving feedback or criticism? Thank you for the question. So when giving feedback to someone, it's important to be clear and specific about the behaviors or actions that you've observed. Uh, make sure to avoid any unclear statements and also be sure to include both positive aspects and areas for improvement in your feedback. Show respect and empathy for the person's feeling and perspective. Recognize that receiving feedback can be challenging, so you should approach the conversation with sensitivity to create a safe space for understanding. Encourage them to share their thoughts and feelings about the feedback and be willing to answer their questions and any concerns. Um, also, let them know that you're willing to discuss and clarify any points that they may find confusing. That's all. Thank you. When you guys grow up, not right now, maybe after 10 years, I will tell you guys to read a story, read a book. It's called Crucial Conversation. How you start a crucial conversation. The conversation that you don't want to have with anybody, um, but you have to have it. How you're going to start it without any fight or anything there's a whole book on that, that i don't know if you had a look at that lily uh, i i did that course uh, it's a three-day course and that was a wonderful book i'm going to it sounds great yeah excellent thank you thank you ziana for your answer so when others use hurtful and offensive language it can be tough to respond effectively while staying calm. What are the strategies can individual use to respond effectively when faced with hurtful and offensive languages from others? My question for Raima. Uh, um, so some strategies you could use are like telling a trusted adult, like your parents or your brother and sister, or if you're at school and this happens, then you could ask your teachers and friends, because it's really hard to stay calm and say something very nicely in a nice way and not say it hurtfully, so it continues. Um, like one time I was hurt, like many times when I was in kindergarten, I was hurt with face uh, offensive words because usually kindergartners at that age, they're young and they're weak and they really don't know how to like get through it. So I, when that happened to me, I told my friends and my teachers and my parents, they helped me. So um, my teacher told the principal and we just figured it out. And sometimes people say it because people say offensive stuff to you because someone has said something offensive to them and they want to get the anger out on someone. And so that's why they do it on you. And it's like a chain reaction. If they, they do it to you and you do it to someone else, then 
it just keeps going. So there's, you have to find a way to stop. That's all for now. Thank you. Excellent. Wonderful answer, Raima. Thank you so much. So we have come to the end of our podcast and the final segment. Our guest, so I would like to welcome Lily to share her thoughts. You have listened to our participants, what they had to say. Any any advice, tips for them? Well, all of the answers were very insightful and um, yeah, really, really great answers, really great advice. Um, words do really matter a lot, definitely. They've done actually some studies before where people said nice words or mean words to plants. Have you ever heard about those studies? And then the plant either wilted or it, it started to bloom. And I really believe that with words, it can become kind of the self-fulfilling prophecy. If somebody tells you constantly, you're stupid, you're ugly, you're worthless, you know, you start to internalize it, you start to believe it, you start to think it must be true but if you constantly hear how wonderful you are how smart you are how you know you can do anything you put your mind to that makes it go the other direction you know having supports and you know i think um it's not sometimes enough if you just believe in yourself and think nice things by yourself but to hear it from other people i think it makes a really 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 big difference and I think a lot of time that's the difference with people who are really successful and you know really do big things in the world is having just the words from other people around them and then it can also go very much in the opposite way as well if constantly you're told these horrible things and and it's really true like Raima said like the chain reaction like these kids say, you know, the kindergarten kids, if they're calling names, they, they hear those words from somewhere. You don't just wake up and knowing these, you know, like offensive words or insults. You hear it from somewhere. And I hate to say, but I think a lot of time it's from the family because when you're when you're that young, you're usually around family members most of the time, not not really your friends at that age. So I think people really need to consider the impact of just, you know, how how important the words are. And, you know, it can be considered emotional abuse, which can leave really long lasting scars on somebody. You know, you hear adults talking sometimes about how they remember being bullied in high school or elementary school, and it still affects them in their 40s, you know, when they're middle aged. And those words, they're, they're like branded on your, on your skin. And, you know, we really need to think about the power that words can have. Even, you know, through history with, you know, any great leaders who've given speeches that we remember 50, 100 years later, those, those words matter, you know. And we can use the words for good or bad. We can use the words to change someone's day. We hold a lot of power with what we say, and I really believe we need to be responsible with it. Like if you're in Tim Hortons, for example, and you tell someone you look really beautiful today, I love your dress, that that can change their day. And then it can change how they interact with other people as well. Or if you say to a woman who's not expecting, wow, how far along are you? Are you you know, you look like you're very pregnant and they're not, they might be having a really horrible day after that and crying and then being really mean to everyone around them after that for the rest of the day, which then, you know, has that, again, the chain reaction. So I think we just really need to know how much power the words hold. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Lily. Thank you, Lily, for um, your insights. Uh, so I would like to thank our participants, Adria, Parifta, Ziana, and Raima for joining us today. And also I would like to thank our guest, Lily, for joining the podcast today. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Before we wrap up, I would like to remind our listeners that there are several resources available to help deal, to help individuals dealing with bullying. The government of Alberta has a bullying helpline that can be reached at one 456 2323 
Bullying is a violation of human rights. Under no circumstances is bullying acceptable. As a community, we have a shared responsibility to take a stand against bullying and refuse to be bystander. Thank you for joining in conversation with Manwar Khan and we will see you next week. Bye everyone and thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.